The woman who fears the Lord will herself be praised. Her children have called her back, have called her most blessed. Her husband has sung her praises. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather together to celebrate the memorial of St. Monica and these most sacred mysteries, we pause calling to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who consoled the sorrowful and who, are mercif and who mercifully accepted the motherly tears of Saint Monica for the conversion of her son Augustine, grant us, through the intercession of them both, that we may bitterly regret our sins and find the grace of your pardon. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to you who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be holy with all those everywhere who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you were not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. I will praise your name forever, Lord. I will praise your name forever, Lord. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. I will praise your name forever, Lord. Generation after generation praises your works and proclaims your might. They speak of the splendor of your glorious majesty and tell of your wondrous works. I will praise your name forever, Lord. They discourse of the power of your ter terrible deeds and declare your greatness. They publish the fame of your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your justice. I will praise your name forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Stay awake, for you do not know when the Son of Man will come. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this, 
If the master of the house had known the hour of the night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So, too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Who, then, is the faithful and prudent servant, whom the master has put in charge of his household to distribute to them their food at proper time? Blessed is that servant whom the master finds on his arrival and finds doing so. Amen, I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that wicked servant says to him, my master is long delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with drunkards, the servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish him severely and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. The saint in which the church celebrates today, Saint Monica, did exactly that throughout her entire life. To be clear, most, if not everything, in which we know about Saint Monica comes from her son, whose feast day is tomorrow, that of Saint Augustine. Monica was born in the 4th century, so in the early 300s, and um, it was shortly after Christianity had been legalized. She, as a young, young lady or as a child, had been baptized and also as a teenager was married. Her husband in her marriage was not the best of marriages. In fact, her husband struggled with um, alcohol abuse and was, was quite abusive, but yet she continued to pray for him that he would have a conversion and one day be baptized. Before his death, according to St. Augustine's confessions, his father was baptized and a conversion took place. She also prayed greatly for her son. She had two sons, Augustine and his brother, obviously. And Augustine, at the age of 16, took a turn for the worse and started to live um, quite the wild life. I guess the life of dissipation is the gospel might call it. And fathered a child out of wedlock and whatnot and had not been baptized. He started to seek the truth and was a very intelligent man, as, as we know from all of his writings. But yet it wasn't the real truth, the truth with the capital T. For well over a decade, for almost a decade and a half, she prayed for his conversion. In fact, that's all she wanted before he died. On Easter Vigil of the year 387, she got her wish. He was baptized and became Catholic. On their way back to northern, um, northern Africa, which is where they lived, they stopped. And we have the account in the Office of Liturgies today, or the Liturgy of the Hours today, of the conversation that her and her son had. This is recorded in St. Augustine's Confessions. As we listen to this, note, Monica wanted one thing, and she absolutely got the one thing that she wanted. The day was now approaching when my mother, Monica, would depart from this life. You knew that day, Lord, though we did not. She and I happened to be standing by ourselves at the window, overlooking the garden and the courtyard of the house. At that time, we were in Ostia on the Tiber. We had gone there after a long and wearisome journey to get away from a noisy crowd and to rest and prepare for our sea voyage. I believe that you, Lord, caused all this to happen in your own mysterious way. So the two of us, all alone, were enjoying a very pleasant conversation, forgetting the past and pushing on to what is ahead. We were asking one another in the presence of the truth, for you are the truth, what it would be like to share in the eternal life enjoyed by the saints, which no eye has seen, nor ear heard, which has not even entered into the hearts of man. We desired with all of our heart to drink from the streams of your heavenly fountain, the fountain of life. That was the substance of our talk, though not the exact words. But you know, O Lord, that in the course of our conversation that day, the world and its pleasures lost all their attraction for us. My mother said, Son, as far as I am concerned, nothing in this life gives me any pleasure. I do not know why I am still here, since I have no future hopes in this world. I did have one reason for wanting to live a little longer, to see you become a Catholic Christian before I died. God has lavished his gifts on me in that respect, for I know that you have renounced earthly happiness to be his servant. 
so what am I doing here? I do not really remember how I answered her. Shortly within five days or thereabouts, she fell sick with a fever. Then one day, during the course of her illness, she became unconscious, unconscious, and for a while she was unaware of her surroundings. My brother and I rushed to her side, but she regained conscious, consciousness quickly. She looked at us as we stood there and asked in a puzzled voice, where am I? We were overwhelmed with grief, but she held her gaze steadily upon us and spoke further. Here you shall bury your mother. I remained silent as I held back my tears. However, my brother haltingly expressed his hope that she might not die in a strange country, but in her, home, in her own land, since her end would be happier there. When she heard this, her face was filled with anxiety, and she reproached him with a glance because he had entertained such earthly thoughts. Then she looked at me and spoke. Look what he is saying. Thereupon she said to both of us, bury my body wherever you will, let it not be a cause of any concern. One thing only I ask of you, that you remember me at the altar of the Lord wherever you may be. Once her mother had expressed this desire as best as she could, she fell silent as the pain of her illness increased. Over 1,600 years later, we still remember her this day at the altar, other side of the world from where they were. Today, we pray to her in a very special way for all Christian mothers. We pray through her intercession for all those, especially perhaps children or family members that need conversion of hearts and to turn to the faith. We pray to her that, like her, we too can have that persistence in faith and prayer, trusting in our Lord. St. Monica and her son, St. Augustine, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for Bishop Sheridan and for all those who are entrusted with the wisdom of the church. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all government leaders that they will enact laws protecting the dignity of all human life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all Christian mothers this day that through the intercession of Saint Monica, they may be great example of all those holy women whose praises we sing. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are in need of conversion, that through St. Monica and St. Augustine's intercession, they will truly know the truth and the love of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are sick and suffering in any way. For them, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Loving and most merciful Father, with faith and confidence we bring these prayers before you, placing them at the foot of your Son's cross. Please grant them that they be in accordance with your will through the intercession of Saints Monica and Augustine and your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Blessed are you, all creation, for your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit to the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, O Lord, on the sacrificial offerings of your people and what they devoutly celebrate in honor of blessed Saint Monica. May they express in its power to save, experience in its power to save through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, share support so that, encouraged by so great of a cloud of witness, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and archangels and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. indeed holy o lord in all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the appellation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Monica, Saint Augustine, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially Charles and Joan, and to Charles and Jones, and to all who are pleasing to their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Perpsum et cum ipso et in ipso STB Deo Patri Omnipotenti in unitate Spiritus Sancti Omnis honor et gloria for omnia secula seculo room. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We are replenished, O Lord, with the gifts we have received on the feast day of Blessed Saint Monica. Grant, we pray, that we may be purified by their effects and strengthened by the help they bring through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the glory and joy of all the saints who have caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Free through their intercession from present ills, informed by the example of their most holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen. So that together with all, you may possess the joys of the homeland where the Holy Church rejoices that her children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. And through the intercession of Saints Monica and Augustine, may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael.